Hello, everybody. Welcome to our question of the day for January 3rd, 2026. And a happy birthday to my dad. He turns 59 today. And uh, this is obviously a photo of him giving me a bath when I was probably about three years old. Uh, my We were a Navy family. My dad was in the Navy. Um, I didn't get to see him a whole lot until I was about five years old when he was uh, discharged um, after serving his six years. And uh, about 10 months after he was discharged and came home, my baby sister was born. You do the math. And on that note, we have an OB question. How appropriate. A 36-year-old G2P1 at 33 weeks gestation presents to the ED due to the leakage of fluid from the vagina. She reports occasional spotting but denies contractions. Fetal movement is normal. The current pregnancy has been complicated by asymptomatic bacteriuria, which cultured positive for Streptococcus agalactiae and was treated with amoxicillin. Follow-up urine culture after treatment showed no bacterial growth. Past medical history is unremarkable. Her previous pregnancy res uh, resulted in a term spontaneous vaginal delivery of a healthy baby girl. Vital show blood pressure 94 over 58, heart rate 110, respiration 16, temperature 102.3. Fundal height is 33 centimeters from the pubic symphysis. Fluid is nitrazine blue positive. Ferning is visualized on microscopy. On speculum exam, the cervix appears closed. Fetal heart rate is 168, moderate variability with spontaneous accelerations. Tocometry shows no contractions. Transabdominal ultrasound shows uh, a fetus in transverse lie. The deepest vertical pocket of amniotic fluid is one centimeter. Which of the following is an indication for delivery in this patient? A, fetal tachycardia, B, maternal tachycardia, C, advanced maternal age, D, streptococcus agalactiae, colonization, E, uh, fetus in transverse lie, or F, spontaneous accelerations. All right, so you can go ahead, place your answer here. Go ahead and pause if you need to. And let's go ahead and move on to our answer in three, two, one, A, fetal tachycardia. All right, so first we need to understand our diagnosis here so we can uh, know uh, what the indications for delivery are or what the criteria for this particular diagnosis is. So our patient is a 33-week gravida with unequivocal rupture of membranes, right? So nitrazine blue positive and positive ferning. So um, because she is leaking fluid, amniotic fluid, and she's not in labor, no contractions, that is pre-labor rupture of membranes. Is that it? No, 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 no. 33 weeks gestation, she's preterm. So this is preterm premature rupture of membranes. All right, straightforward PPROM. And at 33 weeks, the default posture is expectant management. We wait, okay, we wait. However, this patient is febrile to 102.3. She is tachycardic, which I could have highlighted, but I didn't. And she's mildly borderline hypotensive. All right, now there is fetal tachycardia uh, there's moderate variability, but that doesn't rescue the situation. In the presence of a maternal fever, fetal tachycardia is one of the three criteria that satisfies a diagnosis of chorioamnionitis, also known as an intraamniotic infection. Okay, and that is indeed the more important diagnosis here because that is going to affect management. Now, read the question carefully. Okay, they're asking... Which of the following is an indication for delivery in this patient, okay? And so you need to know, in addition to the maternal fever, what pushes you into a diagnosis of, uh, of chorioamnionitis. So in plain terms, chorioamnionitis is really just an infection of the amniotic cavity. It could be the membranes, the fluid, the placenta, sometimes the fetus itself. This is not a laboratory diagnosis. It is a clinical judgment. And the penalty for hesitation on this diagnosis is fetal hypoxia, neonatal sepsis, and maternal morbidity. We see a number of complications down here. Now, Let's be precise. Maternal fever is required. 
Okay, so if you just have fetal tachycardia, that means nothing. You have to have maternal fever. Without fever, you do not have chorioamnionitis. But as you can also see, f uh, maternal fever is not enough on its own. You have to have the fetal tachycardia or the maternal leukocytosis, if for some reason you did get a CBC, or purulent amniotic fluid. Any one of those three in combination with maternal fever establishes the diagnosis of chorea amnionitis. Now, this is the point that students struggle with. Once chorea amnionitis is suspected, gestational age no longer matters. Notice here in the management, we don't divide it by maternal age like we do for PPROM, and I'll show you PPROM next just to give you a, a refresher. All right, this is very, very, very important. 33 weeks, 38 weeks, 40 weeks makes no difference. Infection here is an indication for delivery. Antibiotics are not a substitute. They are an accompaniment. We give antibiotics and deliver, same time, okay? Do not wait for labor. Infection is not something that we observe here. So your mission is to administer broad-spectrum antibiotics and delivery, not one or the other, both. Let's look at our wrong answers. Maternal tachycardia, not an indication for delivery, even with fever. Okay, it is supportive of infection, but it's also nonspecific. It could be due just to the fever itself, which may not be infection related. It could be due to pain. It could be due to anxiety. It could be due to dehydration. If you gave me maternal tachycardia alone, you should not be delivering. All right, so here it contributes to the overall picture, but it's not the key trigger as written among these options. Advanced maternal age, completely irrelevant to the decision uh, to deliver. Maternal age really changes risk profiles for aneuploidy or certain obstetric complications, but it's not an indication for delivery here. Strep A galactiae, what is strep A galactiae? It's the same thing as group B strep. So group B strep earlier in this pregnancy tells you that she will need intrapartum GBS prophylaxis when she's delivering, but that's not the question here, okay? It has nothing to do with delivery. Fetus and transverse lie. So that's gonna change the mode of delivery, but not the timing. And so because we're not gonna have her go into labor, that's gonna take too long, we are going to do a C-section anyway. But if you were at 33 weeks gestation, let's say a woman came into the clinic at 33 weeks gestation, would you say we need to, and the baby was in transverse lie, would you say that you need to do a C-section? No, we wait a few more weeks before we would then attempt a, a cephalo version, but you would not do anything at 33 weeks for transverse lie. Uh, spontaneous accelerations? No, that's a reassuring fetal heart tracing, never an indication to expedite delivery. All right, so let's slow this down and walk through this cleanly because PPROM is one of those topics where students either memorize the rules or actually understand the decision points. And I want you to do the second. Definition first, PPROM is a rupture of membranes before 37 weeks. That's it. Don't overcomplicate it. If she's contracting regularly, it's preterm labor. If not, it's PPROM. If she's 37 weeks or more, then it's just... Uh, Prom, it's just pre-labor rupture of membranes if she's not in labor yet. And if she is in labor and has ruptured membranes, then it's just ruptured of membranes and labor. We expect that. All right, so timing is everything here. Now, the risk factors. Notice how infection shows up early on this list. GU infections, things like what this patient had, asymptomatic bacteriuria, also bacterial vaginosis, not incidental. Okay, th those infections, they cause inflammation and inflammation weakens the membranes. A prior PPROM, that matters because membranes that have failed once are more likely to fail again and trauma is obvious here. Uh, cervical insufficiency, again, also obvious. It creates a mechanical vulnerability. Smoking matters, it, that's believed to increase inflammation in general. Nicotine affects collagen integrity and polyhydramnios in multiple gestation. That's just simply about stretch. Over distended membranes are more likely to rupture. Diagnosis, straightforward, all right? You just uh, check the fluid for nitrazine positivity and fern ferning on microscopy. That's it. Ultrasound will support the diagnosis, but it doesn't replace it. Oligohydramnios is something that we would expect to see. Now, management. If she is under 34 weeks, your first question is not deliver or not. 
Your first question is reassuring or non-reassuring on the fetal heart tracing. If she's reassuring, there's no infection, no labor, no fetal compromise, then you give steroids and latency antibiotics like ampicillin and erythromycin. If she is non-reassuring, then you do delivery and intraamniotic infection treatment, okay? Because that's typically what's there. And that's ampicillin gentamicin. That's the antibiotics you give for chorea amnionitis. And the way you can remember it is that's the same uh, antibiotics that we give for neonatal sepsis, ampicillin and gentamicin, really good regimen of drugs, okay? Now, if she is under 34 weeks, like we said, we need to give the antibiotics and we need to do the delivery now. If she's under 32 weeks, as usual, magnesium as well. 34 weeks and beyond, algorithm simplifies dramatically. Delivery. You no, lo no longer need to buy meaningful time because there isn't any. All right, the infections, infectious risks outweigh the gains here. And finally, the complications. Preterm labor, that's common. Uh, very obvious. Uh, intraamniotic infection, that's a big one, as we saw in this patient. Placental abruption can happen because the membranes are gone and the uterus is irritated. And umbilical cord prolapse is also a real risk, especially in this patient who has malpresentation and oligohydramnios. All right, so if you remember nothing else, remember this. PPROM is not one disease. It's a branching pathway. And gestational age is telling you what might be possible, while infection is telling you what you must do. And that is what? Delivery. Okay, that is all I've got for you. If you like this video, please uh, subscribe, hit the like button, and I will see you tomorrow.